So today we're over at Lang Equipment here in Wausau, Wisconsin. They have two locations, one in Wausau, one in Marshfield. At this location you guys have bad boy mowers, you have Polaris side-by-sides, um, some four-wheelers, and you have a line of compact tractors. We actually carry two lines. We carry the Branson tractor line and the Yanmar line, um, both very good rugged tractors, um, both here and Marshfield, both those. So today what we want to focus on is one more. So we get a lot of questions about how do I lubricate my lawnmower? What do I have to do every time I get my lawnmower out? Are there things I have to do? Now this is a bad boy mower. It's a very rugged machine. You can see it's, it's built to last. But there's still going to be maintenance you have to do from time to time. Absolutely. Um, you know, every, every time that you go out to mow, you always want to make sure there's nothing under that deck before you start it up. Um, animals can run under there. There's different things that can get underneath that, and you want to make sure that you get a good place clean starting it up. Um, the other thing is, you know, the last time you mowed, did you get some twigs? Did you get some things up into that belt area? You know, just making sure that that's clean of debris. Um, you're really going to extend the life of your belt if you get that sort of stuff out of there. So now when it comes to fluids, we're going to have hydrostatic fluid? Yes, that's going to be what drives the actual machine, mm -hmm. hydraulic fluid that's in there. And then you have engine oil in the back, and then you have some exert fittings here. Now what are some of the things that people could do, or what are some of the things that people should just bring the machine in for? You know, some of the things that you can do on your, on your own, really, are the engine oil change. That's a pretty simple one. Um, some people do choose to bring it in for that. Every time you change your oil, you've got to make sure that you're lubricating those grease circs everywhere on that machine. They're found in the owner's manual. Um, doing the hyd hydraulics, it's a little bit more of a challenge for people, but um, yearly, just checking out those spark plugs, making sure you're not running too rich or too lean, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of guys will bring to us to have done. So it's a good idea to kind of bring the mower in once a year, have you guys go through it. Preventive maintenance is going to save you a lot of money. Yeah, and headaches. You know, che checking that air filter when you go out there too is a big thing. Uh, a lot of dust is created um, when it's drier. You get a lot of dust debris that can get sucked up in there. Um, animals can build nests in there, you know, so that's a big thing that we want to watch out for. So one thing people can and should be doing at home is probably greasing. Yes, greasing is huge. Um, in fact, there are spots that you can see from above, but they're also underneath and you want to make sure that you get all of those. It's only one or two pumps, really, to make sure that it's lubricated properly, but everything will be in the owner's manual for your particular machine. Yep. If you go in that owner's manual, you can find out which kind of grease you're going to be using. It's probably going to be a lithium grease, uh, NLGI grade 2. It's going to be your most common type of grease you can find. Easy to find. Now, greasing can be a little bit of a headache, <laughs> and it can be messy. It can be messy, and it can be a headache. Uh, there are products out there that are lifesavers in that area. They clean it up. Now this is the, the grease gun I was familiar with. I grew up on a farm and this is the culprit right here. Um, usually you, you start by getting yourself full of grease before you even start. Now on this this model, I think most people are going to be familiar with this. You pull back on that spring and plunger here and then you can unscrew it, put a new tube in. Usually some grease leaks out on the back. Now these are notorious for leaking grease out on your floor and getting air gaps. You guys use a different system here. Yes, we use the loop shuttle. Um, made in Germany, very easy. If you look at them side by side, you can see there's no spring, no plunger. Um, very easy to change. All you have to do when you run out of grease is unscrew this. 100% um, recyclable. So when you're out of grease, you just take that out, take a new grease, a grease tube, is what you want to do is you want to prime it just by pushing up on the bottom so that a little bit of grease comes out of the top. This works actually on vacuum, so you want to make sure that you get that pushed up just a little bit. I'm ready to grease already. So you're not going to have an air gap, you're not going to have an air gap, you're not going to leave from grease? No, it is 100% ready to go. And you can store that up on the wall, you can store that on your workbench, it's not going to matter? Correct. Um, you know, one of the big things, especially in the summer months, you store that vertical, you're going to get grease that drains out of the bottom of that, leaves that nasty oil spill. This is 100% sealed container on here, uh, this tube. So you use 100% of your grease also because of the shape of it, which is uh, huge to be able to do that. Because a lot of times you'll get an air gap in there, and you're throwing out a half, half a tube of grease for no reason. Now those you can even take the tube out, put the cat back in, store it for winter, if you want to do something like that, just so you don't have 
that grease in that gun. Yes. Um, now on a mower like this, there's going to be what, six Zerk fittings? Very fine. On this particular one, there are six Zerk Zerks. Um, steering is going to be one of the biggest ones, just making sure that you get that properly lubricated. Like I said, it's just going to take one or two squirts. Mm -hmm. Hooks right on. Just two little pumps, and you're good. Yeah. You go on to the next one. Um, the biggest ones also are for your spring tension to make sure that your pulleys are getting your proper belt tension. You want to make sure that those are well lubricated so that you're not getting a lot of belt wear. Now, over greasing can be a problem too. And it's not only going to make your machine dirtier, but as you have more grease laying around, it's going to be a spot where dust, dirt, and debris can collect. And we don't want that either. So one or two pumps is probably going to be all you're going to need on the mower. Now there's two in here for steering. I see two more down here. In your owner's manual, it's going to show you where all these dirt fittings are. And when you walk out to your mower, if you just start looking for pivot points, you're going to find those dirt fittings. And anywhere there's a pivot point, there's probably going to be a bushing or a bearing. And it's just going to take one or two pumps. Now this is like every 25 hours you want to be greasing this machine? Yeah, every time that you change the engine oil, the manufacturers say to change that every 25 hours. Um, I know a lot of guys will do it a little bit less frequently. Grease it every 25 hours, you know, make sure that everything is moving freely, um, that you get good good lubrication on there. Um, yearly, 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 at the least for your hydros and your engine oil. Um, it's a big investment and protecting it is a lot cheaper than the alternative if you don't take care of your stuff. Now, loose shuttle grease gun, that's going to be something we can find in your stores. I think we can probably find it online as well. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that we should be looking at, or is that kind of the overview of what you need to be looking at for your, your maintenance on your mower? And when you're greasing, you should just be doing a general check too on your mower, right? Making sure there's nothing that seems out of the ordinary. Yeah, um, making sure that your belt is free of debris is going to be a big one. Making sure that your handles line up when they're in here so that as you push forward, you're going in a straight line. Uh, making sure that your deck is level is another thing. Um, usually that won't go off unless if you run into something. Awesome. Well, if any of the viewers have questions, they can definitely reach out to us at advancedengintech.com or they can reach you, Nate, at laneequipmentllc.com or you can give us a call, Marshfield or Wausau. Uh, we've got a great, great service team. Mm -hmm. Stop in. Or you can also visit us at the Wisconsin Farm Technology Days. We are going to be there July 10th. 11th and 12th at booth 160 through 164. We'll be there with AET Systems, uh, the guys from Loop Shuttle, Bad Boy Moors, and we're, we're going to have compact tractors. tractors. We're going to have a nice selection of stuff there. Um, people that know a lot about this machinery, how to maintain it, um, lubricants, you know, uh, people that know a lot about the lubricants and, and how think, to properly maintain it. I think Tractor stuff. Mike from Ask Tractor Mike is going to be there as well. So if you have any questions about new compact tractor that you just bought from Lane Equipment, it might be good to sit down and, and talk a little bit with Ask Tractor Mike about little tips and hints that are going to save you a lot of headaches down the road, which is yes. things that are going to be new to a, a new tractor owner. Yeah, a, a lot of people don't know, you know, they have questions, sometimes they feel like it's foolish to ask um, the dealer, you know, they, they might not feel comfortable asking me. Um, they go on to YouTube, um, Ask Tractor Mike, he's very popular. Um, he knows what he's talking about, which is big, you know. Um, tips, tricks, things like that, definitely come on down and talk to him, check it out, check out our stuff, and uh, we'll see you there.